what I want to do in this video is compare investment to consumption. And we're going to think about it in two contexts. One I would call the everyday conventional context. And then the other one would be how we would think about it in an economics context. Because these words mean something very, something very particular to an economist. And that's important that it means something particular. Because we're going to start using these words or this terminology or these classifications to understand where GDP is coming from. So in everyday, so let me draw a line over here. So this is going to be, this is kind of, every day, every day or conversational versions of this term. And oh, down here we'll put the economics, the economic, the economic versions of this term, especially when we think of it in the, in, in the context of accounting for GDP. And they're not necessarily all that different, but they are different in important ways. So an investment, really in both cases, you can generally view it as something that you do to get some future gain. So for example, if I today build a house, so I build a house, so that is the house I built today, and then this will be the timeline, the house will keep lasting. And it's an investment because it's going to be giving me future gain. A year from now, I'll still be able to live in that house. So I will have the saved rent, that's a future gain. Future gain two years from now, it'll keep giving some type of gain. You could have a financial instrument, maybe some type of debt instrument. You're lending money to someone else, so maybe Maybe you buy a bond, which is essentially you lending money to someone else. That is an investment because in, an, in the everyday sense of it, because when you, when you make when you have that asset, when you've bought that asset, it's going to pay off something in the future. It's going to pay off some interest or what some profits. And in the everyday sense, I would consider something like, hopefully it would be going to college would be an investment. So education, I'll say it education. Because you invest that time and energy in education, it's going to keep paying off. Hopefully by doing that, you're going to get better employment and higher wages the rest of your life. It will keep paying off. So this is the everyday notion of investment. The everyday notion of consumption, the way I think about it is, you are, you are buying something or you're doing something that you're just going to use up in the short term. And just by using it up, so whatever, whatever that object is, if you just use it up, so use use it up, and it's just going to hopefully benefit you in some way, but it's more of a short-term thing, I would consider that consumption in the everyday sense. So if you go buy a candy bar and eat it, you have consumed the candy bar. You have not made an investment. If you go to a movie, that is consumption. And I'm not making any value judgment that one is better than the other. Investment, at the end of the day, you are investing so that you can get future future benefit that could lead to consumption. Because at the end of the day, the consumption is one of the things that might make your life a little bit better off. So I'm not saying that one is better than the other. But watching a movie, that would also be consumption. Uh, spending time, uh, buying a book. Well, you could debate whether that's education or not. But let's say you're, you're, you, 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 you buy a book that is not educational. That is consumption. But it is making you happier. Hopefully, it's making your life better in, in, in some way. Now, the economic definitions are related to these everyday definitions, but they're a little bit more precise. And they make the definitions in a way that they're easier to account for if you are a nation. They're easier to keep track of. So the way an economist would define it, they would define economic investment as spending on capital equipment, capital equipment. So capital equipment are things like, are things like if you are a factory, you will buy the equipment to run your factory. You buy the robots, and you buy the assembly line, and you buy uh, the wheelbarrows or whatever else, the things that have to cart things around. That is capital equipment. It would be things like inventory, inventory. So for example, the inventory, and this is still not so different. Both of these things are being used to produce things in the future, to produce future benefit. You're buying that inventory, sometimes raw material. You're going to add value to it, and then they're going to be used to produce something in the future. It includes, it includes things like even the structures, the buildings, the structures. And, and so for all of this, in, in the economic sense, and this is why it's easier to account for, this, for the most part, is being done by the firms. And it also includes, it also includes the one thing that households do, which is build construction of new homes. New, new homes. This is from the households. Households. 
Actually, the buying of a house does not show up in consumption or investment because nothing new was produced. Something just changed hands. So whenever we talk about any of these things, especially when we're talking about it in kind of precise economic terms, it's the production of new capital equipment, new inventory, new structures, new homes. If I just buy a factory from someone else, that does not add to GDP. It would not be considered investment or consumption because I'm just transferring an asset from one person to another. It would only be added to GDP when it is first created. And on the consumption side, from an economic point of view, so let me draw a little bit of a line right over here. Consumption is considered to be any spending, any spending on final goods, on final goods by households, by households, except for new homes. Except for new homes. And let me make this even clearer. Because we remember, if we're just transferring goods, that shouldn't count. So let me put it on new, on newly produced final goods. Now what's unintuitive a little bit over here is according to the, the way we account for GDP, your, the tuition that you spend on a college education, that is new spending on final goods. And here the final goods, let me write final goods or services. The service you're getting is your education. That would be consumption. In it, so education would fall here in the economic sense, while in the everyday sense, I would consider education right over here. Maybe you are buying a car and you're not buying a car for leisure purposes. You're buying a car because you need your car to go to work. That could, there's an argument that that would be an investment in the everyday sense. By buying, by having that car, you have something that can take you to work every day. So you're getting future benefits. So there's an argument that maybe that's an investment in the everyday sense. But in the accounting sense, that car, so the car would sit right here. You bought a new car, but that is considered consumption. You did not, you did not buy a new house. And the whole reason that, or at least as far as I understand, the whole reason why it's set up this way is this is easier to account for. You look at all of the spending by firms, that's easy to account for. You essentially call that investment. Because at the end of the day, all the spending that firms are making is they're doing it to produce some good or service. So we call this investment any spending that the firms do. And then on top of that, when households purchase new homes, we also call that investment. And that's just easier for, for the accounting offices of governments to keep track of. And everything else that households do, we consider consumption. And we'll see in the next few videos, there are a few other categories in terms of things that the government do, and then we'll have to think about imports and exports.